Within two days, four of them already sold. Yeah, it's a new world. And potentially put down an offer Ooh! for like almost a hundred over asking. And we realized it's so not worth that price. We saw a great place that we're gonna put an offer on. We bought our first home. From start to finish, we're gonna show you guys everything, including budget, how much we spend. Just keep in mind that this is Toronto pricing. I've seen all around the world that you could get really, really nice places for the budget that you have. We're living in and around Toronto, and uh, yeah, the prices are not great for what you get. But remember when we first started, we were like, okay, what's our budget? We were like 400k. <laughs> Well, I mean, ideally, we would like to buy something at 500k. Oh, of course I'd love to buy something at 500k. But nothing exists. So yeah, let's talk about our requirements. <laughs> what were our requirements for the home? Just a garage and a driveway for me. Yeah, that was it. But we started learning more and more things as we went along the process. So our first step was shopping for an agent. So then that was when we met Jeff. Right off the bat from the first meeting, I think we vibed well. He seemed to understand that we're a young couple and like, I think a lot of older people look at us, they're like, okay, yeah, a young couple that's going to get married, that's going to have kids. He truly had an understanding. He was like, oh, those are not your priorities. Like, school yeah. areas are not your priorities, um, but a garage is. I'm running out the door. We have a few viewings booked today. It's our first time viewing a place. But, like, out of seven of the listings that I we were interested in that we sent to the agent... Within two days, four of them already sold. Shit is moving so fast. We first started looking at condo townhouses because him not knowing our budget, we didn't know our budget. Uh, condo townhouse seems to kind of fall within our, our ballpark. Yeah, what we were telling him was our budget was a conservative yeah. number. Yeah, we were in the 600 ranges at first, except the problem is that condo townhouse means that you can't really do work on the house unless you go through the board and mm -hmm. also you have monthly maintenance fees, which we're trying to avoid. We tend to want to take care of things ourselves. And generally one car garage that's tiny, that yeah. literally just fits a car and then a one car driveway. When did we start first talking about getting a house? The end of last year or middle last year? Yeah. That we wanted to start to find a place. Because we were thinking about getting married first and then realized, wait, we might, well, wedding doesn't cost as much as a house, but we might actually have the funds to buy a house. And obviously that's both of our first choice is to own asset first before the party. We still didn't know our budget yet. We briefly met with a mortgage specialist. He gave us a rough breakdown of if I got pre-approved now for the year of 2018, how much would we get for the mortgage? And that was what, around 550? Both of us had about 120K saved for a down payment. This year, I'd have to pay more taxes to prove that I made more income so that I could get a better mortgage. Mm -hmm. So little things like that, we still had time to make adjustments before we filed our taxes. Saying that you're self-employed, it just came with so many more things that I had to prove because it's not salaried and it's not an established company. Mm -hmm. If I'm sole proprietor, I'm the only one in the company and they're like, okay, well, if you're down, then where is the income going to come in? It is good that I started doing YouTube full time a few years ago because that gave me a chance to prove that I was making steady income for the last few years, not just, oh, you've been doing this. Yeah, one year. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even know if this is viable or not. So yeah, I had to go through my accountant and file taxes for the year, pay a lot of taxes this year. Oh man. And then kind of hope for the best. We handed it off to the mortgage specialist. Specialist had to go through the undertaker. Try again. Underwriter. Underwriter. Undertaker. Same thing. No. They hold our fate in their hands. <laughs> then the pandemic hit. So all that went out the window. All my contracts froze up. 
all my work froze up. All my pending payments stopped. It, it really changed a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so things were a little hairy, but we were still very fortunate. The only thing was that I couldn't apply for EI. And that's how we were able to get our mortgage, our, and... our final mortgage number, yeah. which was 600K. So we stopped house hunting for the past couple of months because I didn't know what my financial situation was going to be like. We actually didn't really know what your job situation was going to be like. His job is to help dealerships. And if the dealerships are closed, then he'd have no work. So mortgage interest rates went way low for the first time in so long. I think it went from 3.5%, now it's 2 point something percent. And like as a non-math person, it makes no sense because I'm like, that's only 1%. But then even point something of a percent makes a huge difference in over 30 years. interest over 25. 30 years. So if you get a mortgage of $100,000 at 3.5%, this will be your debt. And if you get a 100,000 mortgage at 2 point something percent, this will be your debt. I'm gonna do this in post so that I don't have to do the math in my head right now. In Canada, while this quarantine thing was happening, I wasn't able to take EI because so this is something that I asked a mortgage specialist and it's something that I did, like if I didn't ask I think I wouldn't have even considered it or thought about it. I asked him if I if there's a risk if I applied for a CERB which is the EI that's going around for the quarantine. He said hopefully the banks will look on that lightly because pretty much everybody is applying for CERB but he doesn't know for sure if you know, it'll raise flags for me. And as somebody that is already self-employed, it was already so hard to prove my income. And it was already very difficult to apply for a mortgage to get the amount that we would want. And now we're at this point where it's been two months. And we talked about it. We want to hit the market before it starts going back up again. Yeah, it's a new world. To us, the prices haven't really gone down much at all. No. I haven't seen any difference in prices. No, yeah. Things are so weird these days. No one attending the property viewing has traveled outside of Canada within the past 21 days. I've not knowingly been close to or come in contact with anybody of presumptive or confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19. So when we were telling Jeff, we said, literally a garage, don't care how many bedrooms there are, don't care how many bathrooms there are. We're hoping for a nice kitchen because we want to... We're kitchen people. Yeah, we want to entertain and we cook a lot. Nice to have was gas range. And we were looking actually for older homes because we wanted to work on it ourselves. Yeah. The other day, our agent texted us and that's the first time he reached out to us with a listing that he thought was good. This house is pretty much move-in ready. Not only does it tick off all the boxes of our must-haves, it ticks off boxes of our nice-to-haves. Um, it's priced very low right now, so I'm guessing they're trying to have a bidding war. So we're gonna go see two places today and potentially put down an offer. Ooh! We also got pre-approved by the bank. So now we finally know what's our max. That's the home inspection. The idea being that they want whoever, they're going to go with a firm offer. Like they don't want to see any conditions. Mm. So it'll be tough if you don't have your financing in place. Okay, conditional financing. Like, oh, that's why they that's had the home room. inspection done yeah, so that you could do you firm offers. They don't want a home inspection clause and they're, you know, because if you come down to two offers. Mm -hmm. You're going to choose a firm. You're going to, you're going to choose a firm offer 100% of the time. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's like light. they sneezed pot lights. Yeah. He's, he, he might be an electrician. We learned from seeing all these houses is that people suck at doing renos. Either they suck or they just don't try. They just want to flip the house as quickly as possible. Yeah, they buy the cheapest flooring that they can, lay yeah. it over whatever. Yeah, the floors are bad. Slap some paint on it and then expect $100,000 more for their house. Oh, but they got it. So this is going to, yeah, this is, this might be high sevens. High sevens? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Man, these will be fun for the archives. So I'm glad that we saw that house because it's not as nice as it we looks, were hoping. Yeah. Well, they put laminate in it, which is great. It looks great. But it was already buckling. Like really just trying to hide stuff. Very shady. Yeah, it's shady. Like I understand that you got the home inspection done, but... I don't know who that home inspector is, which means that they're trying to sell fast. They're trying to sell fast and it's like, why... Why are you trying to sell yeah. fast? Layout was something that we learned. There were a lot of living rooms that were open concept, but there was no wall to put a TV. That and if you, one. yeah, if you wanted to put a TV, it means that you're putting a media unit basically in the middle of the room. Yeah, we were learning things like that, understanding our preferences. Uh, we were looking at back splits before. Yeah. And then we learned that a lot of back splits don't open up to the backyard. So you either have to go through a side door or the front door to walk around to the backyard. Um, oh, another nice to have was the, um, a rental unit. Oh, yeah. In the price range that we are looking, you, it's not possible. There's just no point in trying. Yeah, it's not possible. And also, apparently, most apartments, most basement apartments are illegal. Yeah. Majority of them Majority. do not meet code. Yeah. A lot of the basements ended up being in the middle of the house. Yeah. So or, there would be no way of having... Yeah, or backsplit where there is a side entrance, but then we don't have access to the backyard. Mm -hmm. There was a point in time where we were talking to parents, the possibility of lending money. So our parents and all of this have been very supportive. They said they're willing to lend us money. And um, I'm actually, I'm pretty flippin' satisfied with ourselves because we paid for all of this by ourselves. My down payment came from mutual funds and RRSP. Since I've started working full-time, I've been putting away money either annually or monthly. And then mutual funds, my parents started for me when I was very young. So that's the stuff that grows passively. Yeah. That is thanks to my parents for starting that early. And then again, savings. We are definitely not big spenders in any way drive a Toyota for Christ's sake. Many Toyotas. Many Toyotas. I, yeah, I, you were driving a $400 car for, what, seven years? Six or seven years. Yeah. A $400 Tercel. If you want to buy a house, just date a mechanic. They'll save you a lot of money. <laughs> Either also, that or they'll spend all the money on cars. It, it, yeah. Oh, yeah, you could really go. a lot of car parts. <laughs> you could go either way. That's true. Mine was the same. I got a lot, like a, a later start to saving money. Same thing, just uh bi-weekly automatic withdrawals mm -hmm. into a into a tfsa and that an stuff rsp really helps. and it's money that you you just yeah don't realize if, goes away if i didn't do that i definitely wouldn't have enough money at all i knew that i was buying a house and with the the way that the first time home buyer thing works is you can pull all that money back out tax-free Oh yes, there's a lot of so, first time home buyer incentives. Basically by doing that, I sheltered 15,000 from taxes and because I put it into such an aggressive fund, I think I made $3,000 on it. We we were just in a good position. We were trying to find that sweet spot. Oh, we hit it. But yeah, it's it's hard when you think that something like that's going to happen. The bubble? Yeah, when we thought it was going to burst. We saw a great place that we're gonna put an offer on and it's a townhouse the house itself is perfect and if we did buy it it would be under budget so none of that is the issue but the issue is the value of the house right yeah our agent suggested if we really loved it we can't let go of it you go in with a bully offer they are holding off offers okay. uh, until the 15th of June Mm -hmm. But you could, if you liked it, go in and put a bully offer in it. A bully offer? It's called a bully offer. It's basically like, here you go. I want your, yeah, I want I want your house. house. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. So it's listed at 679. It's probably going to be seven and change. You're, you're paying the very top price that is so good that the seller can't walk away from, which means that you're not getting a deal on the house. But at least you're getting the house that you really want. There's 
very high demand, very little supply. So you're going to have more people bidding on places than normal. We're going to put an offer on this place. We just don't know how much. That's the, that's the issue. This townhouse is like, the layout was perfect. The kitchen is a little small, but the backyard is so private. I could walk around in that house from top to bottom, fully naked and never worry that somebody will see me. I thought it would be like, oh my gosh, we found it. The perfect home. Okay, let's bid it. And then there's a tense moment of a bidding war where it's like, okay, uh, 7,100. Anybody gonna do the 71? Anybody gonna bid the apparel? Then gonna bid the apparel? And then 72? And then, and then we have to know when to walk away. Sometimes when people get into bidding wars, you end up overpaying for the house because you just want to win mm -hmm. and that's a bad position to get into but it makes sense because a lot of people have kids they want to move in before the school year starts things are uncertain or they just need to get out of their current living situation um so it makes sense for some people to have to pay more yeah we saw a total of 15 houses which I don't think is... It's not a lot. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. And we put in an offer on one house and got it. So that'll be the next episode. Our first offer, we got it. But yeah. there were two other houses that we were thinking of thinking putting, of an, putting offer an offer. On. But both of them sold before, uh, before the offer date. So the next episode, we'll get into our home on the next episode of dragon ball z we're in front of one that looks just like one we saw last week except better somebody just put in a bully offer it's crunch time it's crunch time it's game on we can't afford it hold our breath <laughs> we're never gonna eat for the next year i was like it's stressful <laughs> <laughs>